If you've ever tried your hand at a foreign language, it's likely you've come across Duolingo, the globally popular language learning website and mobile app. The app takes inspiration from video games to bring a wider audience and the element of fun to the activity of learning a new language. But where did the app come from? How did a free app generate $80 million in revenue in 2019? And what led to its meteoric rise to appear on over 300 million smartphones around the world? Here's how it happened. The project to develop Duolingo began in 2009 at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania by Guatemalan professor Louis von Arn and his former student Severin Hacker of Switzerland. Von Arn had already received international recognition for the creation of ReCapture, the human verification system that you may have encountered when registering on websites such as Facebook, Ticketmaster and Twitter. The original version of ReCapture asked users to decipher unclear words by typing what they could read. These images were in fact taken from archived copies of the New York Times, who paid ReCapture for the digitalization of their previous issues, allowing the company to kill two birds with one stone. Von Arn carried this crowdsourcing business model to Duolingo. As users were learning a language, they were also contributing translations of simple phrases from a variety of documents across the internet. Although Duolingo has now moved away from this twofold business model due to concerns that they were becoming a translation tool and not a learning resource, the crowdsourcing model became the inspiration for the educational platform that we know today. Von Arn was aware of the expensive barrier to learning English in his home country and across much of Central and South America, and believed in offering a free source of education to those who needed it. In October 2011, Von Arn and his development team raised $3.3 million in funding. The early investors included author Tim Ferriss and a venture capital firm owned by actor Ashton Kutcher. A month later, the test version was made available and the website soon had a waiting list of 300,000 people. 2012 saw its release on Apple's App Store and it was made available the following year in the Google Play Store, where it quickly rose to number one education app, receiving one million downloads in the first three weeks. It seems Von Arn's project was whetting the linguistic appetite of many. 92% of European school children are currently learning an additional language to their own, and Von Arn estimates that there are 400 million people in China who are learning English. The founder has always wanted to keep the app free to everyone, and so the free version only makes money from ads. The paid version of the app, Duolingo Plus, is purchased by only around 2% of total users and for $9.99 a month, removes ads, gives unlimited lives for in-game quizzes, and offers several other small perks. As time has gone on, Duolingo has mirrored public demand and placed greater emphasis on its mobile app, using some clever strategies to attract and retain customers. For example, those who download the app are not immediately required to register for an account. They can first complete a few exercises to gain a flavor for the app before needing to enter their email address. The app also uses video game concepts like badges and streaks to encourage users to continue learning and tracks their activity to determine when they are most likely to engage in a lesson. Duolingo has also devised its own free, standardized English proficiency test, as Von Arn was aware of the long-winded and often expensive lengths involved when trying to prove one's English skills to universities and employers. But Duolingo is not necessarily for everyone as it's considered to be notably less effective for advanced learners, and so may be unsuitable for those trying to master a language. In any case, we believe that it can be a unique tool to unlock access to a completely new culture. And when it's free of charge, what have you got to lose? And that's how it happened.